In chemistry, we're very interested in the electrons, and we like to know where they are, or at least roughly where they should be in regards to the nucleus of an atom. Okay, we like to know um, where we should find the electron, because that will help us in describing how that electron is going to act with other electrons, how we can get those to interact. With the previous video, we saw that we have our quantum numbers, okay, our set of four quantum numbers combined, putting them all together, will describe each electron that's found on an atom. Okay. Now, we only went to the n equals 2 level. Okay. We went from n equals 1 to n equals 2, and it got very, very complicated compared to the simplicity of n equals 1. Okay, it gets much more complicated as well when you go to the n equals 3 level because you also have d orbitals that you can deal with and there are 5 d orbitals that you have to worry about. Okay, so we have quantum numbers and they can describe our electrons just fine. It tells us what orbital they're in, what orientation they are, and what spin they are. But describing electrons in this fashion gets really tedious really quickly. So we have other ways that we can represent our electrons. We call them electron configurations. Essentially, we're looking at a description of how the electrons are arranged in an atom, what orbitals they're in, what energy level they're at, what quantum level they're at. Some rules that we're going to keep in mind. Uh, you do not need to memorize these rules, but we are going to apply these rules when we write out our electron configurations. Our Pauli exclusion principle says that no two electrons can have the same set of quantum numbers. And that's essentially what we just worked with, working through our size of our four uh, quantum numbers. The off-bow principle says that electrons are going to fill the orbitals from low energy to high energy. So essentially what that means is we're <laughs> going to fill, okay, we're going to assign electrons to an atom, and we're going to fill them from closest to the nucleus to further out. So our energy, okay, as we increase our energy, our n level is going to increase. So we have one, the 1s level here, Okay, this would be the n equals 1 level. We have the n equals 2 level, the n equals 3 level, and n equals 4. Okay, we've seen something like this, not split up into orbitals, but we've seen something before uh, where we saw levels just kind of written as lines, right? And we went n equals infinity earlier in this chapter. Okay. Now what happens is, is these lines are, are just made up. We're just trying to look at this. Um, this is actually a very simplistic view of it. We're looking at each quantum level as its own kind of level. What actually happens is the energy difference between a 2s and 2p is actually split apart. They actually aren't on the same energy level. Okay, so this here, this is a more accurate depiction of the energy levels um, of our orbitals. So here we see there's a split albeit small, but there is a split between the 2s and the 2p. And we see here, even at the 3s and the 3p, we see a similar split. And then our 3d here is split even further from our 3p and our 3s. And so <clears throat> s orbitals are going to be lower in energy than the p, which are, have, are lower than the d, which are lower than the f. And one thing to notice here is that when we do this split, what happens is our 4s is actually lower in energy than our 3d. And our 5s 
is again lower in energy than the 4D. This will come up again in a, another video where we're going to start taking away electrons. And when we're so close in energy, and we can actually take uh, or we can add electrons to higher energies before we do the lowers, or if we're taking electrons away, we can take from the lower energy be before we take from the higher energy. So we'll talk about this more later. Uh, what we want to focus on right now is we want to look at assigning electrons and filling these orbitals from low to high energy. So in our electron uh, energy level diagrams, which that's what this is, so energy level diagram, each line represents one orientation of the orbital. So S uh, orbitals can only have one orientation, okay, so they each get one line. P orbitals have three orientations, Px, Py, and Pz. So we have three lines representing each of those three orientations. <coughs> Excuse me. Then our D orbitals have five orientations, so they're going to get five lines. Each line, <coughs> each orbital, can have two electrons. Okay. So remember we have electrons, we have spin up and spin down. So when we draw these out, okay, we're going to do spin up and spin down, and each line can have an up arrow and a down arrow. So each orbital can house two electrons, okay, and they're going to go have an up arrow and a bottom arrow. Now, one thing about assigning these electrons, and it happens once we get closer in energy here, is we want to keep in mind Hund's rule. So that within a subshell, so the same N but different L, so this would be a subshell straight across, subshell straight across, each orbital is going to get one electron okay, before any orbital gets two electrons. Okay, so if we were, say, filling our two P orbitals, okay, we would <clears throat> put all up arrows before we started adding down arrows. So electrons prefer to be paired up, but if they're not going to be paired up, they'd rather be all singles. <coughs> what can I say? Electrons are weird. So our electron level diagrams, okay, drawing our electrons out like this, is one way to represent our electrons instead of using quantum numbers. <coughs> So we have energy level diagrams. We also have quantum numbers. So that's going n equals such and such, l equals such and such, m sub l equals such and such, and m sub s equals such and such. We have a third way of representing our electrons, and these are called electron configurations. And electron configurations <clears throat> list our electrons and the orbitals that they're located in, just like our le energy level diagrams, but it does it in a very condensed way. So we don't have to worry about the spin up and spin down nonsense. We don't have to worry about our axes. We just condense it down. And how it does that is it lists our orbitals in order of energy. And we have in order of energy, we have the 1s, then the 2s, the 2p, the 3s, the 3p. Remember, <clears throat> this is where it kind of flip-flops. We get the 4s is lower in energy than the 3d, even though we have a lower quantum number here. Okay, The high energy of this d orbital puts it higher than the 4s. So we go 4s, 3d, 4p. Then the 5s comes before the 4d. We have the 5p and the 6s. <coughs> Excuse me. It goes higher, but we won't need to know 
higher. Okay. This is something, this, this order of the orbitals is something you are going to need to know. Okay. This image here is depicting a way to know it or be able to generate it is if you list your orbitals okay, we have 1s that's the only possibility and n equals 1 and then we have 2s and 2p right? 2d does not exist okay? 3s, 3p, 3d 4s, 4p, 4d, 4f and if you list those across then what you do is you <clears throat> draw down then you go back up so we have 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, 5s, 4d, 5p, 6s. Okay, that's where we leave off here. And then we have 4f is actually higher in energy than the 6s, the 5p, or the 4d. <clears throat> so that's a way, in, in case you forget this or you're not as familiar with this by the time the exam comes, you can generate this list. Okay? And at the end of this, these lectures, I will show you a trick of how you can use the periodic table to figure these out. Okay? So in the next examples, in the next video, we're going to go through writing out our energy level diagrams, the quantum numbers, and the electron configurations uh, for some example elements so we can see how to represent our electrons.